Chairman, my very esteemed honorable colleagues, honorable minister and his entourage, like the chairman rightly observed, when we spoke last night, I said I'll stop by very briefly, even if it's for five minutes, because of the importance of what's going on here uh, and what has been going on in the last couple of days. Uh, we all have a responsibility to make sure that uh, we, we uphold very simply the honor and glory of the country we serve. Um, Honorable Minister, let me commend you for your efforts so far and what you've done and what you want you what you have been doing. Well, let me just make a couple of comments. Uh, so I think it's on that premise and in that context that I want us to see what is going on, what is what is happening today. And I'm sure, I don't know if my chairman or any of my colleagues may have alluded to what I'm uh, about to say, it's public knowledge. I think we should look at this thing from the premise that the Nigerian state was attacked. It's not a building was demolished, no. The Nigerian state was attacked. And I think if we look at it from that premise, we begin to understand or underscore the importance and the gravity of what we're dealing with. Because in terms of immunity and inviolability of, in terms of the diplomatic immunity, inviolability or whatever, it also extends to property. But now we're talking about the state. It is trite that the embassy of any country is actually the state, the sovereign location in that particular foreign country. And that is why when there's a there's problem in Nigeria today, all Americans will run to the American embassy to seek shelter because you cannot even move near there. So from that point of view, we need to address this in that context that Nigeria was attacked. My question is this. I'm not interested in the dispute, land dispute. It's not an ordinary land dispute. No, it's not. It now has now become metamorphosed into a dispute between two countries. Not some landowner The question I want to ask is this. If, for adventure, just for argument's sake, it was the U.S. Embassy that was demolished in Ghana, do we think the U.S. will be talking about apology, uh, we'll look into it? We'll... That's what I want to know. Is that what the U.S. Or, assuming that the U.S. Embassy was demolished here in Nigeria, in Abuja, or the U.K. Embassy, or we don't even have to look for a superpower. Just name it, any developed country. Or even if the U.S. Embassy was attacked by Canada, their neighbor, Is the United States going to fold their arms and say, and be diplomatic in language or subtle in their approach? Or assuming that the UK embassy was attacked by Scotland, their neighbors? It underscores the point that makes it even worse when we're told that this is the second time it's going to happen. Of course it happened the first time, they got away with it. And of course, they're going to do it again. They get away with this this time, they're going to do it a third time. It's just human behavior. So we've established a pattern. And what we get is apology, we'll look into it. I don't think that should suffice at this point. I have tried to get in touch with her, and I hope I'll be able to talk to him in the next uh, 24 hours, that is the speaker 
of the Ghanaian parliament. Because it concerns him as much as it concerns me. And we have to, whether it's back, uh, back channel diplomacy or however we, we, we need to do it, there must be, we must put a stop to what has become a recurring decimal or perennial problem between Nigeria and Ghana. I see a situation, even where you have, because this is, to me, this is like sibling rivalry between two sister countries. But even in sibling rivalry, there's a line you just don't cross. There's a line you don't cross. And they just crossed the line, albeit a second time. What are we going to do about it? Uh, we have heard stories that there is something called, I didn't even know that, Chairman, I don't know if you were aware, there's something called a non-citizen's card in Ghana. And if you're a non-citizen, you have to carry a card. Most countries that I know, you carry a card to show that you're a citizen. This one you carry a card just much like in China. You carry a card that shows that you're a non-citizen. And there's been speculation, and it's only speculation, that it was actually system directed at Nigerians, because we have almost two million people, two million Nigerians there. So that that seeming innocuous policy is actually aimed at Nigerians. So we need to begin to peel off those layers of us to know exactly what the, what has Nigeria done, what exactly is going on. Uh, I don't know. I I I came in at a time when the honourable minister was talking about court processes or. Ghanaians looking into it, and um, I think this, is, this has gone beyond court processes. The ideal forum of court, I don't know, Minister, you are more versed and experienced in foreign affairs. If we establish that this is a dispute, there's not a dispute between landowner and a country, it's actually demeaning Nigeria. It's actually demeaning Nigeria to say a dispute between a landowner and the and, and Nigerian state. So if we can agree that this is a dispute between two countries, because that embassy represents Nigeria, and whoever did that did it under the color of law. So it's both, it's between Nigeria and Ghana. Will the proper forum for dispute resolution be a Ghanaian court? So I think if we can establish the fact that it's a dispute between two, it's an international dispute, and under international jurisprudence, I don't know if the UN or whatever, whether it's ECOWAS, I'm not sure. That's why I'm yielding to you and conceding to you that you probably have more. Uh, I think we should, that's what we should be looking at. That's the forum we should be looking at. Because invariably, if Ghana, if Ghana has a problem and they're operating through subterranean moves, I have a problem with Nigeria. What do we think the outcome of the legal pr uh, proceedings will be? So I think we should pursue it from, uh, from that angle. I think we should make it clear, which I know you, you, you that's why I commended you for, for what you've done so far. Make it clear, clear to the authorities in Ghana that Nigeria is not going to sit down for their arms. And you, you know, reciprocity is a legitimate instrument in foreign relations. The doctrine of reciprocity is, I, I cannot understand how a country will do that when you know you have prime property in the sister country that you have put under attack. There's property in Abuja, there's property everywhere. And even if a citizen of Ghana, and another citizen of Ghana, if they're having land dispute, I want to believe Ghana is a country based on the rule of law and due process. One citizen is not going to go and just demolish the, the other person's property. They'll go to court before to resolve their dispute and establish ownership or license or whatever it is. That didn't happen. So even between two citizens, that is what they'll do. For you to now 
without any fear or just a country like Nigeria or any country, even the smallest country, just go over the cover of night, the police did not come, nobody showed up, and just demolished the place. It shows high disrespect for the country. And that's why we're here to uphold our honor and glory. That's what we're here to do. And we must honor, uphold the honor and glory of Nigeria. We become, rise, we become sleeping giants, laughing stock. South Africa did it. Ghana did it. Tomorrow will be the turn of Uganda. The next time will be Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. And what will we do? Because of the gentle man that we are as a country, we will continue to send letters and accept apology. So I, I, that's just the beat I have. And I want us to go on that premise. Let's be a little bit more stern, a little bit more aggressive in our approach. The days of being a, trying to be diplomatic and be a gentleman, I think we should put that aside, especially because it's a, there's something in law called a recidivist. It's a, it's, a, it's a second time it's happening. You know, uh, you can excuse the first time. But when it's happening the second time, and then something sterner uh, needs, needs, needs to happen. Uh, uh, the House is here to back you up, Honorable Minister. Uh, whatever we need to do, whatever needs to be done. Like I said, I'm trying to reach the Speaker of, of the Parliament and to see how we can resolve this issue, but not in the way of they're going to a Ghanaian court to go and find out ownership. We're beyond ownership. That place belongs to Nigeria. That is Nigeria. Not that it belongs to Nigeria. That is Nigeria. If anything happens in Ghana today, that's where we expect Nigerian citizens in Ghana to run to. So I thank you once again, Honorable Minister, um, and I hope that uh, we can resolve uh, this unfortunate situation uh, where yeah, in very capable hands is the chairman, the members, you know, they were, you can see there's a full, full team of uh, members here. It shows the seriousness that we have, uh, we have taken, uh, we have taken this issue. And then let's think about it. Like I said, if UK was attacked, if, the, if this was the uh, U.S. embassy that was attacked in Ghana in Accra, I'm telling you, all hell will let loose. All hell. Right now, the, you know, I'm not saying that's what we should do. <laughs> you will see the the twin bombers or whatever it is already circulating the whole circumference of Ghana. All hell will let loose. If it was UK, the same thing. It was Germany. So I, I, I don't think, um, I don't think, I, I think, uh, I, I think we should respect ourselves as a country. Uh, well, thank you, uh, Honorable Minister.